Today I'm going to tell you how to uh, how to give a test dose of amphotericin B and how to administer a amphotericin B dose. So this is and uh, 50 mg lyophilized powder of amphotericin B as you can see here. What we can do here is that we're going to put 10 cc of distal water in it. When we put 10 cc in it, 1 ml will be approximately 5 mg. So we have a immunocompromised patient, he is diabetic, having invasive fungal sinusitis of the paranasal sinuses plus involvement of the left eye as well. The main thing to remember is that when you when you constitute this uh, when you constitute this mixture, you have to shield it from the light so that it is viable for the next two to three days. But if it is exposed to light continuously, then it is not then it not viable and not advisable to use it. Now I will tell you how to make a test dose. The mixture is homogeneous and it is well constituted. So you can see here that it is well constituted and fully homogenized. Now for the first dilutional, what we will do is that we will take roughly 0.1 and reconstitute it in distilled water. Then we will take an insulin syringe <coughs> and take one unit of this sample put 9 units of distilled water. Administering uh, the amphotericin B uh, to the patient, one should always always uh, ask about any drug allergy, history of any drug allergies. And don't ask for the minor symptoms like, uh, like itching or, uh, or other gas, GI upsets. You ask for the major symptoms, whether there was any history of shock or respiratory illnesses or anything else. So you have to first ask the questions regarding that. And one thing to remember is that the amphotericin B uh, is usually given in immunocompromised diabetic patients who are already having uh, insulin being injected in them, so which causes hypokalemia in the first instance. So amphotericin B in itself also causes hypokalemia. So you should always have to be wary about the potassium levels. When the, the renal toxicity is the dose limiting factor in amphotericin B and it causes a tubular type of necrosis in the kidney. So you should always have a pre-knowledge uh, what are the urea and kidney status which are generally, generally poor in such immunocompromised patients but you can start off with a, a very small dose 0.1 mg per kg per dose initially and then you can gradually build up to a dose of 0.5 mg per kg per body weight. 
One thing to note, remember, is that the dose should not exceed uh, two grams, the cumulative dose after the treatment uh, you start giving the dose, and the maximum dose per day should be of 1.5 milligram per kg. And you should, before starting the treatment, one should always get an ECG uh, to start to uh, for the uh, to see the peak or levels of the t uh, to see the T wave. And one should have a pre uh, uh, labs of the electrolytes of the patient, so that one should know the potassium levels in uh, before starting the treatment. Till the test dose has been administered, we are waiting for the next 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, we're going to start with the uh, 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 we will start with uh, one uh, five milligram dose. Uh, in 5% uh, dextrose line solution in a burette and we're going to give it very slowly over time and uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, observe the patient's vital throughout the time that it has been administered. Thank you. You have given the initial interdermal dose of 1 into 1000 dilution and you have also kept 1 ratio 100 dilution with you and there is no reaction. You can always be play, you play a little bit more safer and you can give another test dose of 1 in 1 100 uh, dilution. You just take Here you will take the volar aspect of the patient's arm and after uh, spending please spend the pain. And you're gonna mark two locations. Madam fridge me jayega ye. Yes, two locations are marked. One is for the medicine and one is for the distilled water. What you do is that you just breach the superficial epithelium. So that the epidermis is breached and put a drop of drug on the epidermis and a drop of distal water at the distal water site. After having this, again we will take the other volar side and now we will administer the interdermal test. Distilled water and the drug. We'll make a small ray swelling here. Similarly, we will also administer distilled water here for the control site. And we'll see this site after 20 minutes for wheel and flare reaction. <laughs> 